Hey everyone! Welcome back to Yousef Reacts! I am Kara and today, we're diving into the magical world of music and culture. As we explore the legendary Bob Marley and his timeless message of love, peace and unity. Bob Marley, the iconic Jamaican singer-songwriter, remains one of the most influential figures in music history. His music not only captivated audiences worldwide but also served as a powerful vehicle for social change. Bob Marley's music wasn't just about catchy tunes and infectious rhythms. It was about spreading a message of hope, love and unity. His lyrics were deeply rooted in the struggles of his people, yet they resonated with listeners from all walks of life. Bob Marley's music speaks to my soul. It's more than just entertainment. It's a spiritual experience. His message of love and unity is more relevant now than ever. In a world filled with division and hatred, we need Bob Marley's music to remind us of the power of love. Even decades after his passing, Bob Marley's legacy continues to inspire millions of people around the world. His timeless classics like One Love, Redemption Song, and Three Little Birds are still anthems of hope and resilience. From music festivals to cultural celebrations, Bob Marley's influence can be felt everywhere. His music transcends boundaries, bringing people together regardless of race, religion, or nationality. The film opens with a young Robert Nestor Marley Nolan Kalinan joining his mother as they take a bus from one home to another. This is followed by text explaining how Bob Marley is still known today as Jamaica's biggest star. He grew up from humble beginnings around a time of violence in Jamaica during the 70s. After the nation gained its independence from Great Britain, Bob Kingsley Ben Adia, already well into his career, goes to a press conference after announcing that he is planning to hold a peace concert, Smart Jamaica, to unite the nation in the face of political discourse. Some critics fear that Bob is making it look like his is taking a side. Kingston, 1976 Bob is playing soccer with his friends and sons when thugs start firing their guns in the streets. Bob protects his sons and takes them away, telling them not to worry about what happened. This is also where he starts to come up with three little birds. They return to their home where Bob talks to his wife Rita Lashana Lynch. As the constant threat of violence around their family puts her on edge. Later, Bob goes to rehearse I Shot the Sheriff with his group, the Whalers. Rita steps out momentarily and sees two gunmen running towards the house, while a third aims his gun at her head. The two men enter the house and shoot at Bob and his friend Don Taylor Anthony Welsh, while Rita has also been shot. Despite his injury, Bob rises to his feet and gets Don and Rita to the hospital. Bob sits by Rita's bedside as she lies unconscious. He reminisces about when they were teenagers played by Chuan Dajai Henrique and Eni Ayashi and Bob began to court Rita. Following their recoveries, Bob still plans on going forward with the concert. Everyone close to him sees it as a bad idea for his safety and his family's, but he insists on doing it. On the night of the show, Bob goes and performs, but he briefly hallucinates seeing the gunman that shot him in the crowd. He then stops the show and reveals his injuries to the crowd before walking off the stage. Rita tries to comfort him, and Bob says he needs time to himself. Three months later, Bob travels to London with some of his friends. While there, they are arrested for possession of cannabis. In jail, Bob recalls how Rita first brought him into the Rastafari movement. He also thinks about witnessing his father abandon him and his mother when he was a child, and he refused to acknowledge Bob as his son. 
Later, Bob talks to his producer Chris Blackwell James Norton over ideas for a new album. Rita joins him in London while Bob and the Wailers are trying to come up with a new sound. Bob listens to the soundtrack to the film Exodus and starts to come up with his own song of the same name. With help from publicist Howard Bloom Michael Gandolfini, the group makes their next album, Exodus, which becomes a worldwide best-selling hit. Following the album's success, Bob goes on a tour throughout Europe in 1977. Although he sees much more success and popularity, Bob is seen engaging in an affair with a woman, Cindy Breakspear You Are My Myers. During a pickup game of soccer, Bob is seen stumbling after an injury, but he brushes it off. Chris invites Bob and company to an event. While there, Bob gets jealous at seeing Rita talking to another man. When he goes outside to confront her, she in turn hits back at him. With the knowledge of his own multiple affairs and the children he has produced as a result, Rita slaps Bob and also tells him to keep an eye out for Don as he is doing some shady businesses behind Bob's back. After another show, Bob confronts Don backstage over what Rita told him. He begins to physically attack Don before his bandmates and Rita pull Bob off of him. Not long after, Bob visits a doctor after Rita and Chris express concerns over a dark spot on Bob's toe where he injured himself during the pickup game. The doctor informs Bob that he has melanoma, and while it was recommended that he have the toe removed to stop the cancer from spreading, Bob declines and is left in a state of despair over the news. He talks to Rita, who gives him her own little speech, and inspires him to return home to Jamaica. 1978 Bob makes his return to Jamaica with a huge crowd gathering for him as the plane lands. Bob visits his old home, which is now empty. The same gunman that shot him enters the house, asking Bob for forgiveness. Bob says he holds no vengeance in his heart. Later, Bob sits with Rita and their sons around a campfire as he comes up with Redemption Song. Rita says that Bob is ready to perform again. Bob and the Wailers later get ready as they gather for a large crowd in Jamaica for a new show. He then gets up to perform One Love. The ending text states that Bob Marley passed away on May 11, 1981, from his cancer. However, footage is shown from his One Love concert where he brought together leaders of opposing political parties as a symbol of unity. It is also stated that Time magazine called Exodus one of the greatest albums of all time. Bob Marley, One Love is a thoroughly generic biopic told entertainingly. It starts off with an interesting idea focusing on a specific part of Marley's life and honing in on the unifying power of his music before quickly becoming the kind of biopic that's been done so many times before. Frustratingly, saving the most powerful moment for the archive footage at the end. Even when this genre is at its blandest, the central performance is rarely the problem, and that's absolutely the case here. Kingsley Ben Adia gives a wonderful performance that never strays into parody and is the only time the film comes close to making Marley feel human. It's also great that Lashana Lynch is given so much support while still getting some spotlight. Reynaldo Marcus Green's direction ends the film a little too early and uses a flashback-heavy structure to hit all the required beats. But it's all done in a technically competent and very serious way which helps. The soundtrack is obviously a major highlight however the score by Chris Bowers is an unexpected highlight thanks to its very dramatic nature. As we celebrate Bob Marley's legacy, let's remember his message of love, peace and unity.
Let's strive to embody the spirit of one love and make the world a better place for future generations. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Until next time, peace and love.